This video is being brought to you by SQL Server 2012 Tutorial.com. For new updates and lessons, please visit our website or blog. So today our, our topic basically is to cover new SQL uh, commands that are available in SQL, SQL 2012. Uh, I am connected to my named instance on my machine and now I am going to load up a script that will guide us through some of the new uh, Transact SQL features that are available in SQL Server 2012. <clears throat> and for the demo purposes, we are going to be using a Northwind sample database uh, that has been around for, uh, for a number of years. So let's uh, get going. Uh, the first item that we will be looking at is the uh, sequence command. Uh, this feature has been around in Oracle for a number of years and is finally available in MS SQL 2012. So think of a sequence basically as an object uh, that provides functionality similar to the identity object, which is the auto number column. The sequence object can be used with more than one table, so that's a little bit different, which is not possible in the identity object. And this is also useful when you have a, let's say a parent child table and you would like to know the value before you are inserting the records. So the best way to do this is to look at some examples. So let's, uh, let's do that. So in order to get started, uh, you have to uh, create, uh, use, use the create sequence command. You give it a name and then you say, what are you starting the sequence with? And then what are you going to increment it by? So at this point, we are starting our sequence with one and we are going to increment by five. So our sequence, if this works, should be something like uh, one, six, 11, and whatnot, okay? So I'm going to highlight this part and then go ahead and execute this. I apologize for that. Uh, I'm getting some kind of error here. So I may have been practicing. I did uh, get an error, so I'm going to go ahead and drop that sequence first. Uh, I, I was testing a few things, so let, let's start over again. So I'm going to use the create sequence command, and I'm just going to uh, execute this part. Just hit F5 on that. In fact, let me do this. I'm going to go ahead and move this down a little bit. Now our, our DB sequence is ready to be used. Uh, and the way you uh, you get this is you go select next value for DB sequence. So now my value should be one. If I hit this again, it should be six, 11, 16. So you get the idea, okay? Now that's not very useful as far as just uh, generating the value. I really wanna kinda show you with a table so let's go through this code. We are going to be essentially creating another sequence. Now this time we are incrementing by three. Uh, we also create a, a table called products uh, extension. Uh, not a whole lot in here, just an ID column and a name column in here. And then we are going to use the insert statement, but instead of using your classic values format, I'm going to use next value for uh, ID sequence. For my ID and then I'm just going to enter this uh, string in the second column okay and so let's go ahead and do this we are going to uh, maybe uh, run this in part so I'm going to run this part first then I go on to creating a table if you do a select from the table obviously there should be nothing in it okay and now I'm going to run this uh, <clears throat> let's run it three times okay so the first time your ID should be one you run it again it should be four and then you run it one more time it should be seven at least that's what I think now when I do a select this part down here is where it's showing you the sequence so the sequence is definitely a useful feature um, if you uh, you know if you want to do you know use that with your uh, related tables I would highly recommend that so let's go on to the next one I'm going to go ahead and drop the table drop the sequence for now so there are quite a few uh, new date functions in SQL Server 2012 
I'm going to show you a couple of them and then highlight some of the other ones. So the first one is called uh, date from parts function. What this really does is it's going to take three different integer values and then build a date out of them, okay? And then the next function is the uh, EO month, end of month function. This is very useful because many applications really need the last day of a particular month. Uh, you know, and uh, you had to do funky uh, SQL logic before, but this function will let you let you do just that. So, so let's take a look at this code. I am declaring some variables here first, okay? Then I am setting the value. So I'm setting a date for um, September 28, 2012. And the idea is that, you know, you may be getting different um, parameter values, and then at the end of the day. You would like to make a date out of that okay so so you do that by this command right here i'm going to highlight this part apologize again all right so let's try this <coughs> okay so when i ran this notice that my date now is september 28 again uh, you know you could change this you could make this october if you wanted to Okay, and now what you're getting is basically a date out of the function. Okay, so that one's not maybe as useful, but the next one is definitely, um, you know, I, I've, I've had to use some stuff like that at, at my work. So you declare a variable, and you set a date, and then you want to find out for this month, August, what is the last, you know, end of the month date, basically. So I'm highlighting this. <clears throat> and then I'm going to run it so now it's telling me that well end of the month is uh, you know August 31 let's try something else I'm going to go to February I believe it's a leap year but we'll just find out here see so that's very useful because leap year is typically uh, kind of tricky to find out how to do that so so that's nice some other useful date functions uh, I will just highlight these this is time from parts date time from parts small date from parts and then, uh, then the last one uh, if you want to learn more this is what I would recommend that you go to MSDN site Olympics are still in full force and when you get to MSDN, you could search for something like this. <clears throat> and uh, it's going to give you, you know, the definition plus a, some examples. So this is a great resource that you can uh, utilize to expand your uh, T-SQL knowledge. So, so that was that. Moving on to the next one. Uh, the next one is going to be... Uh, me highlight clear this part the offset command so this is kind of cool uh, let me just uh, get rid of that uh, so the offset clause really what it does is provides you with an option to fetch only a window or page of results from the result set okay so if you guys know uh, northwind database let me let me highlight this first query i'm going to do just do a select star okay <clears throat> this time let me move it up a little bit so you notice that we have Alfred's Anna Antonio right but what if we wanted to skip some of these in fact we wanted to use just return you know the first one and then skip five and then return the sixth one so on and so forth okay how would you do that <clears throat> so now you can see that you know it is it is skipping in fact let me do this 